Right, been asked what rig I would approach Sandhurst Lakes with and uh, there's a guy at my work who uh, fishes on my team called Richard Prince who fishes a lot with pellets but more importantly he fishes a lot with balanced bottom baits and he's convinced that by sort of balancing your bait with your hook he gets, you know, pickups, more takes, more bites and um, this is a rig that he's actually showed me incorporating a few people's products, an atomic hook, uh, a grabber, super sharp, nice straight point, um, yeah, these are really sharp. Um, tiny bit of shrink on the back, as you can see there, just kicked over ever so slightly. Um, we've got, any of the skins nowadays are pretty good, but this, just for the purpose, is jelly wire and 15. Um, that bit's nice and supple. Um, straightens really nicely, especially if you steam it, but you don't need to steam this stuff, you just just warm it in your fingers and you can see it's just perfectly straight. Then we get back to sort of the important bit, which is the back of the hook and balancing the baits. A lot of people use sort of like a straight bottom bait or maybe even chuck a bit of cork in it, but um, Richard and myself included are convinced that if you take, say, like a, a pop-up, he uses a lot of plastics, um, in, his, in his case it's a tiger nut or a peanut cut down and he doesn't mind about, you know, a lot of people are into small hooks and bits and pieces but he absolutely catches so many carp, He's the, the man is a machine and he uses a really big hook and um, he said like when I've when I got a fish on I want a big hook in, as long as it's sharp, he said but the, once you balance the bait out, he said the hook's really irrelevant because you're just balancing it around and what he's trying to get is like a like a claw effect if you like um, and by using almost like a standard 2T, not a cork ball one um, you whittle the sides down only do it a bit for the time being, just take the sides off because that on its own would pop the hook straight up straight up and what you're trying to achieve uh, be it whatever way you, or form that you're, you're attaching it to this the back of the hook is you're trying to get that hook to almost be a bit like a claw just almost bouncing on the bottom so that when the fish takes it in the hook is almost in that position so it sucks in and you know and, and your hook ratios you're pretty much getting them in the bottom lip all the time what I'm going to do is just show you how he's attached this and he's tried it both ways and normally when you tie a ring on you'd come down the back of the shank of the hook here where the blade would be but what he's done is he's tied it this way round inside the gape of the hook going to the eye but he's tried both and he fishes a lot of sort of uh, lots of fish waters sort of thing you know heavily stocked and since he turned it around the other way and had the braid coming in the inside of the hook like not as not, 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 not it would come out the back he's tied it around this way so the ring sits pretty every time if you have a look at it where the ring's tied People will normally have movement, but with the balance rig, he didn't want that. Um, he wanted it just literally level with the point. So it's tied there, and then it's shrunk down. And so what you've got is really hardly any movement. But what that will do is almost every single time, that will keep the bait and the hook just literally just popped up in the right position. I'll show you how I attach it. So you've got basically the swivel hanging there. For the purpose of this, I'm using bristle filament. You'll see why in a minute. First thing first, you've got your swivel on the back. Right side. Just push one end of the bristle through. So it's like that. On the end of the hook. Well, one thing I would say is be careful. Don't use um, like a standard say splicing needle, they'll, they'll snap on a really hard pop-up. Um, these look like they've almost been microwaved, they're so hard, they're like cake. But an awesome little bait, especially for the winter time, especially as we're getting into cold weather now, Tutti Frutti and Esther Blend and stuff like that, they're really good. What you're doing is, onto the bristle filament, you're pulling the pop-up on. 
just pull it down onto the swivel, just onto the barrel. So now that bait can spin just, just freely on the back of the hook like so. And obviously you've got your tag ends like that now. A pair of scissors, don't cut it off and leave bits of nine on the floor. Just cut them into your tackle box. You can always tidy your tackle box up later, just don't leave it on the floor. Um, and the wind's probably going to blow now, so you probably won't be able to see how I do it. But it's just a case of blobbing the ends, like so, push your finger on it. And now you can see the rig sort of really taking form. That is going to sit like so. And you want that to balance like that. So now it would be a case of taking this down to the water. Um, and ever, you know, like a bit by a time, it's a bit like when you're sort of like trying to balance your cork balls out, you know, you, you want to get it really nice, you don't want it sinking too fast, and I think the rig is much more effective, especially when you snip the sides off, it's obviously going to take on water, so you want it really buoyant, because uh, when you wind it in the next morning, it's going to be heavier, because the water's got into the bait, because you've chipped the sides off. But just take a little bit off at a time, and eventually that rig will sit sort of just like that, just bounce. Now, because I'm using a straight point, and there is a lot of gravel in this lake, um, I'm trying to get sort of, if I can, to the slightly deeper bits at the minute because it's cold and the siltier pockets. What I would do is <clears throat> just make up a little stick. Um, this one's just a, some crushed boilies, um, a tin of sardines in the sunflower oil. I prefer that to the brine myself. Um, liquidised it all up with a quarter crusher and uh, put some pellets in there. And um, I had some green lip mussel as well. And I put a handful of that in. Um, yeah, just really pungent, very fishy, and uh, all I would do, if I'm going for distance, I would have, um, I would put a small bag on, like a really small bag, um, especially when it's windy at the moment, I wouldn't want it catching in the wind and stuff like that, so just pull the bag on, just took myself. Going back to the straight points, because if you have a couple of, couple of casts and it's hit the gravel, clonked down too much, you'll be ever, forever changing rigs. Straight points, the, the points tend to ding very, very quickly. But just by having a bag on, you can see now that that bait is perfectly in position. It's not wrapped around the other side of the hook. It's not going to sit funny. It's going to sit once that bag just melts on the top that bait will just start to pop up and the hook itself will just come out of the bag and it will sit literally just like a claw over the top of the bait. On lakes like this I think uh, there's so much food going in all the time that uh, if you come down here and uh, it's not fishing very well I would just fish for a bite at a time. Um, be it a tootie, I've got some white pop-ups, I'd have some yellow ones as well if the lake's fishing on boilies, um, a little stick again, but you could do your desired boilie rig, very similar to that, with a bit of cork in it. If I was fishing a standard bottom bait, I'd want that hair slightly longer. I probably would fish the setup very differently, but for balanced rigs fishing, where I've blobbed it on the end, that will never come off. The coots could pick you up five, six times of a morning, um, and then the next time it could actually be a bite. All it is is uh, that little last little bit of your fishing, that last seven, eight, nine inches, whatever it may be, and that hook point are so, so critical. And the way that you fish your rig, it could just pick up a few more extra bites. And um, on a place like this, it's been fishing very hard actually the last week or so, and it's been a handful of fish out. And ironically, the ones that have been coming out have been coming out to the tooties. So, um, yeah, when the lake's fishing that hard and it's not really having it on the boilies and the food as such, that would be my balanced tooty rig. I hope you've learned something from it. Um, it's a really, really good rig. Just as long as them points are sharp, if you miscast, every time you wind in, always fill your points. If it's not razor sharp, it only takes a couple of minutes to tie that rig. Um, I think that the most time consuming bit would be the shrink tubing. But seriously, I mean, it's you tie the hook ring swivel on first, place it in position exactly where the point is. Um, if you go too long, the hook sits weird and it kicks over. 
Um, that's why you have it halfway down the shank of the hook and it just sits up like a claw and it bounces about. Yeah, keep the hook sharp and I um, hope you've learned something from that. Thanks a lot. Thank <laughs> you.